This is a short beginner tutorial video to show you the basics of how to create your own podcast. You learn everything you need to know about how to record, edit and export your podcast. It's probably easier than you think. Before we start, make sure to pause the video regularly and try to repeat everything I show in this video. You can rewatch it as many times as you want, of course. Okay, let's start then. First, I'll explain how to record an interview easily. If you're not doing an interview, you can skip a little ahead to the part where I introduce the audio editor called Audacity. If you want to conduct an interview, you'll need an app that records your voice and the voice of your interview partner. You can use one of the many voice recording apps for phones or tablets if you do your interview face to face. If you do your interview over the phone instead, I suggest you use Skype. With Skype, you and your interview partner just sign up for a free account and then you can talk to them over the phone and just record your session. Don't forget to start recording your phone conversation before you ask any important interview questions. You can start the recording like this. Click on the plus sign and then start recording. This is very similar on mobile phones, like you can see in the picture here. You just tap on the three dots and then tap on start recording. Skype will show your interview partner that your conversation is being recorded but you should always ask them before you start recording if they are okay with this. Tell your partner what you're go going to do with the recording. You're going to use parts of it for your podcast, basically. Your teacher is going to listen to it and probably also your parents and some, some of your friends. It might also be published on your school's website. So make sure your interview partner knows all of this. They can also stay anonymous. You don't need to t uh, say any names but make sure you let them know. When you're done with your interview, you can click on the plus and stop recording or just hang up. Uh, that'll stop the recording automatically. Skype will allow you to download the recording right away. Download the file to your folder. Next, we need to download and install the audio editor called Audacity. It's completely free to use and there are a ton of tutorials available online. But I'll show you the most important things you need to know so you can start editing your podcast. Go to audacityteam.org and install the program. Pause the video and do it right away. Okay, so you have installed Audacity and started it. This is what it looks like. If you recorded an interview, you can just drag and drop it into Audacity like I'm showing here in the video. If you are recording a script with your voice, however, there are two options. You can use a voice recording app on your phone to record yourself while you're reading out the script. Or you can use Audacity and a computer microphone like the one in your laptop uh, to do the recording. Just click on the red circle to record your voice and on the yellow square when you're finished recording. If your recording is on your phone, you'll have to move it over to the computer so you can work with it in Audacity. Probably the easiest way to do this is by sending an email with your recording as an attachment. Okay, so here are the basics of editing and cutting audio in Audacity. Okay, so this is a live demonstration, so please excuse uh, maybe some uhs and ums that will appear from time to time or if I cut off my sentences, I'm explaining on the go. So what I have here is an example recording and what you can immediately see is that it's not really loud. So if it were loud, uh, these little blue bars would become spikes and go maybe all the way up here and all the way down here. If we play back this recording, you will uh, hear what I mean. So let's do this. Okay, so this is just a test recording and it's not loud enough, it's too quiet. So we will have to use normalization, normalization. Okay, so we will do 
just that. We will use one of the effects called normalization to make sure this is loud enough. What we will do is we will select everything. Right, we'll just left click here and then select the whole track. You can also press Control A to select the whole um, track, just like with other applications. If you press Control A, you can select everything at once or you just select this. Then you go to Effect and down here we have Normalize. This is the effect we want. So we click here, Normalize and usually this should be minus 2.0 decibels. Yeah. So if it's not minus 2.0, change this to minus 2.0 and then make sure these boxes are ticked like, like here and then press OK. And you can immediately see that something has changed. If we now listen to the track again, you will hear that it's much louder than it was before. So let's do this. Okay, so this is just a test recording. And just to compare, I'll move back again. This is the original. Okay, so this is just a test recording and it and now the new one. Okay, so this is just a test recording and it's not Okay, much louder, but what we can hear now is a little bit of noise. If you look here and if I zoom in with the zoom in tool here, you can see that there is a little bit of noise here, a little bit of a squiggly line. I can zoom in even further. So we need to, this is called noise and we need to get rid of it. Let's just listen to it again. This is just the base level of noise. Because we made everything louder, the noise in the background that wasn't really perceptible before has now also become louder and we need to deal with it. So we need to use a second effect to get rid of the noise or at least reduce it. So what we first have to do is we have to give the computer an idea what the noise is. We have to give him an example of what the noise is so he can filter everything um, related to that noise out. So we will give him a five second sample of the noise. Yeah, Select a, a long part of your track that just includes noise, no talking, just noise. So I'm selecting this uh, five second part here. Ideally, this is at least three or four seconds long. Then you click on effects and noise reduction. So we click here, noise reduction. And then we have to do step one, get a noise profile. So the computer will analyze this part that we um, just marked and get he will get a, a noise profile. Second step is to zoom out and make sure everything is selected. The computer now has a noise profile and can apply the filter over our whole document. Again, you can just press Control A to select everything. Control A. Yeah. Effect, noise reduction. And we leave everything here as it is and just press OK. And we can immediately see that something changed here. Yeah. This is before. You can see the little squiggly lines. I can also zoom in. And after the noise uh, effect, the noise filter was applied. This is the new uh, track. So let's have a listen. Whoops. Let's go back. Let's have a listen. So there is still some noise left, but it's still it's already better than before. What we can now do is select everything again or press Control A, go to effect and apply the noise reduction filter a second time over this new filtered version. If we do this, even more noise will be gone. OK, so this is just a test recording. You can still see up here that there is a little bit of noise left. If I play this back, you can see there's a little bit of noise, but this is not really okay. So bad. this is this is not really bad. We can work with this. 
if we apply the noise filter too many times then at some point uh, there will be so many filters that the voice will start to sound very very strange so we can only apply the vo uh, the noise filter maybe once or maybe twice and then we should just leave it at that the recording is already a, a much better than before remember before it looked like this it was too quiet and it had a lot of noise and now we made it louder and we got rid of the noise which is pretty good so next um, we need to edit and cut the track a little bit yeah it's now prepared there's not so much noise it's loud enough now we need to make sure that we get rid of all of the unnecessary stuff so for editing we need the selection tool you can see up here make sure that you have this selection tool selected and not something else it should really be this tool we will use this most of the time so the first thing i will do is i will delete this beginning part because it's just five seconds of nothing so we don't need this long pause i will just select it and then press the delete key to get rid of it and I will do the same at the end. We have a long pause here and I will just select this part and press the delete key. We don't need this. Now I would like to zoom in a little bit and then move here at the beginning. And now we will just listen to the recording and see if there are any problems. If there are any problems, we will try to fix them by deleting things or maybe uh, rearranging them. So let's have a listen. We can play back our track by uh, uh, clicking okay, here. Okay, so this is just... We can play back any part of the track by just clicking here on the timeline. I can start at three seconds. And it's not loud it's enough. Stopped. It's And I can al always stop by pressing this button here. I can start at seven. I have to use... So to make sure... So this is... Or at any other part. I can also start and pause the playback. Okay, so this is just... And then just press pause again to unpause. Just the test recording and... Pause, unpause. It's not loud enough. I can also press the P key, yeah, the letter P, uh, to pause and unpause. It's too quiet, so... We... All right, now let's go back, stop and listen to everything from the beginning and see if I can spot any mistakes or any problems with the track. Okay, so this is just a test recording and it's not loud enough, it's too quiet. So we will have to use normalization, normalization. So we will have to use normalization to make sure the audio is amplified. Okay, so I made a little mistake here and repeated what I said later on. And this is the part that I want to use. And this is the part that I want to get rid of. Let's listen to it again. Uh, here I'm making a mistake and here I'm saying it correctly. I have to use normalization, normalization. So we will have to use normalization. To okay. This is where I start, somewhere around here. Enough, it's too quiet. So we will have to use normalization. Quiet, so we will have to use... Okay, so here, somewhere around here is where I start the sentence that I want to get rid of because I want to replace this part with this part. This is the okay part and this is the one with the mistake. So I have to be careful and zoom in a little bit. Enough, it's too quiet. So we will have to use... Where do I start with? So I have to... Quiet, so we will have... Quiet, so we will... So we will... So we will... So we will... Here, here it is. So I will put my selection tool here and press Control I. And what that will do is split up the track into two parts or in this case into three parts so what i can do now is i can switch to the time shift tool and if i do this i can move the tracks around yeah i can only do this because i split them apart with control i 
and I will do the same here at the end and pause quick. I will just go here to the timeline and then pause. And over here, I will also press Control I, which is a shortcut. No. Okay, I need to move back to the selection tool and select this part and then press Control I to split this track into two. All right, and now I can use the time shift tool to move these parts around a little bit, but they only can move uh, as far as they don't hit any other track. So I can move this track back and then I can move this one and then I can move this one. All right, so I want to get rid of this one and of this one, this is the mistake. So what I'll do is I'll st uh, take the selection tool, select everything and press delete. Okay, so we still have a gap here and we need to close it by uh, uh, selecting the time shift tool and then moving the track back so the two are connected. And if we now listen to the whole thing, I think it will sound much better without the mistakes I made. Yeah, I got rid of all the mistakes and this should now be fine. Let's have a look. Let's start from beginning and listen to everything. Okay, so this is just a test recording and it's not loud enough. It's too quiet. So we will have to use normalization to make sure the audio is amplified. Okay, I don't like I don't, don't like the sound at the end, so let's get rid of this as well. The time shift tool is only there to move the blocks around. Yeah, I can even move this block all the way to the right and then take the right block and move it over to the left. You can see it'll jump over and uh, I can easily rearrange uh, the times. So if I want the podcast to start like this, I can make it like, like this. So we will have to use normalization to make sure the audio is amplified. Okay, so this is just a test record. But in this case, it doesn't make any sense to start like this. So I will move it back into the original order. Yeah, this is what... Oops, this is what the time shift tool is for. And the selection tool is here to select parts and for example here at the end and to delete them or to select uh, a part uh, of the track and then by pressing the keyboard shortcuts control I, I can split the track into two parts and then move the two with the time shift tool independently. I can like move this one around. If I want to delete this, I take the selection tool, select it and press the delete button. If I want to move the two blocks together, I take the time shift tool and I move the right block uh, to the left so they connect again. All right, I think now we're finished. Let's have one last listen. Okay, so this is just a test recording and it's not loud enough, it's too quiet. So we will have to use normalization to make sure the audio is amplified. Perfect. All right, now I'm finished with my editing. Okay, I have one final tip for you. Uh, you're not going to work on a 12 second project. Your project is going to be much longer, five minutes, six minutes. If you conduct an interview, maybe you have material for 15, 20 minutes. And so um, the project will be a little bit harder to manage than this 12 second um, example project that I showed you. So when you import your recording or when you're finished with your interview or whatever, you will probably have a really long track like this. So even if I zoom out and I only record it a little bit extra, but it'll be longer. Here it's just one of, of, of one minute. Your project will be like this long or even longer. Yeah, if you have an interview, it could be much, much longer. 
you will have to cut out a lot. So your project will be much longer originally and you need to cut out certain things. To make this easier to manage, um, you can add a second track and have the finished track on top. So the 12 seconds here are completely finished and the unfinished work in the second track. So you can be a little bit more organized. And every time you finish working on a little piece, you can move it up to the first track. Uh, so by adding a second, uh, you can add a second track by just clicking here on tracks, add new and add new mono track. And by that you have a, a new track here. And then you can keep working on your uh, track here. Okay, so this is a pretty clean recording and I can take it like this uh, by just selecting, uh, ma making a split here when there's this little pause. It's always best to split your recording um, in quiet moments like this, not in the middle of speaking because that's going to sound really unnatural, but you know, when there's a small little pause like this, um, I'm going to select this, press Control I. Now I've split this into two parts and I can use the time shift tool to move this block around and I can even move it up here. It's not working. Here we go. Takes a little bit of fiddling. I can move the block up or down depending on uh, where I want it to be. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get it up there, but just keep wiggling until it works. So, and now uh, I also need to get rid of, of this part here. Control I. Now this is cut into two parts and selection tool. I can select this one and just delete it and then time shift tool, move this back. And now I have added another 20 seconds to my final podcast. Don't forget to save the project every now and then. And then you just move on. And this is basically how you do it. Make sure these two tracks don't overlap. They will play back at the same time. Um, uh, background the noise, background noise or at is least re to uh, reduce removed. it as much. So this is going to be really confusing to the listener. So make sure this these tracks don't overlap. If you have nice sounds, you can use a second track to uh, play back the sounds in the background or something like that. Now this is finished and I can export the file. I just click here on file and export audio. It's important uh, that you select export audio. This will create an mp3 file or a, some sort of audio file that you can listen to in a media player. If you click here save project this will not produce an mp3 or another audio file that you can listen to on your phone or on the, co on the computer. If you select save project as uh, you will also get this warning. Save project is for an Audacity project, not an audio file. If you want an audio file, like an MP3, you should use export. But it's still very, very important that you regularly save your project. Like you can go here on file, save project as, and then I already have this project name, so I'll select a different one and save it. And whenever I make some changes, I'll make sure to save the project again to make sure that I don't lose any work progress in case the program crashes or something bad happens. When I'm completely finished with everything, like here, I select File, Export Audio. And here I can export my mini podcast uh, as an audio file. So I'll do ju just that and save the recording. Here I can give it a name, Mr. Schuch, create how to edit a podcast, the year 2019, and then I'll just say okay. And then I'll go to the desktop, 
and I can open my recording in an audio player. Okay, listen. so this is just a test recording and it's not loud enough, it's too quiet. So we will have to use normalization to make sure the audio is amplified. So this is the finished uh, mini podcast or the mini example podcast. It doesn't have the best audio quality because I used a low quality microphone, but that's basically all you need to know to edit your podcast. And as always, if you have any questions or problems, send me an email or talk to me in person and we'll figure out how to solve your problem together.